All right, we're going to show you how to use a test indicator to align a vise to the ways of a Bridgeport mill. Um, the tools you're going to need a dead blow or a brass hammer, uh, the right size wrench for these uh, nuts on the, uh, on the T-slot bolts, and uh, you'll need the indicator, test indicator, and an indicol indicator holder, put it on the spindle. Okay. Right now my vise is loose. You can see it moves around, the, the bolts are loose. We're going to get it roughly positioned, snug it down gently, not real tight, so we can bang it around a little bit. And then we're going to crank on the handles to get this in position. So what this is doing is we're going to make this surface, this rear fixed jaw surface parallel with the X-way. Okay, and then we're also going to check um, using this parallel th these contact surfaces with that X-way as well. We'll do this one, we'll do the this way first and uh, do the parallel on these surfaces second, but really you should do those first in case it needs a shim. Um, so once you get it in one corner of that fixed jaw, you want it to be down from the surface a little bit so you don't encounter any gouges or flaws. You bring it up until you uh, get just about in the middle of your range, which on these indicators is at the bottom. So I've got the zero at the bottom of the bezel. And then you're going to run your vise or run your x axis all the way down and note what the range goes to really out. So I may run out of range here with this and I may have to start over. Okay, right there's the end of my range. Let me stop for a second. Alright, so we've positioned our indicator on the corner. <coughs> we've got the vise generally located somewhat parallel to the axis. Now we're going to start cranking the axis and moving the, the vise along the indicator. You can see the needle moving as we go along the the vise. It goes continually in one direction because it's at a slant to the to the way. So then once we stop, we note that dimension there, looking at about almost twenty thousandths. I'm gonna back up. <coughs> we tap this back about halfway. Half of that distance with our hammer. And then we're going to re-zero this again, and we'll see if we, how oh, we did. I'm going to go back the other way. <clears throat> so now it's moving slower as we go across the vise. Didn't quite get quite enough out though. So we're looking at seven and a half or so, is that what about what that is? Mm -hmm. Okay, so wrong way. Centering zero. Now it's moving back and forth as I'm putting pressure on it because the ways are loose. But it's staying right around one thousandths <coughs> all the way across. So now we know our vise is parallel to our way and we can snug these down. Once you do that, you'll want to check it again. So run it back again, make sure it didn't move a whole lot. So it's fairly constant all the way across, although it moved off from its original point. So the next thing is to uh, put the contact point on this vise and check to see to see if the, these are parallel to the way as well. So we got to move the axes around a little bit here, move this forward. I'm going to swivel this up, <coughs> move this back, and then come down, come up on the with the vise up into the 
So the contact point is touching the parallel. All right, and there we're at the zero again on the on the indicator. <clears throat> so now we'll run it on that parallel, and we'll see how we are. This is much better, and it should be because these services are precision ground to be parallel, the bottom and top of the vise. So that's about, what do we say, one and a half, two thousandths out. So if you wanted to, then you could put a shim in there. You would do that step before the last step we did, and then snug them down, and then check the back, the rear fixed jaw. And that's how you dial in a, a vise, or indicate in a vise.